This is a Zilch with a uh, Box 35 on it. Notice the unusual reels. These are uh, the way they used to do them in the old days. This is a Yates Madman. It's got an Orwick 64 on it. Beautiful. And this is Tom Dixon's modified smoothie. I couldn't tell what it was. I thought it was a Thunderbird at first. A pretty airplane. This is a concessionary sales, and it is really, really nice to have. We've been dying of thirst and hunger out here. I didn't know it was here, but somebody just told me, so I'm going to go get something to eat. This is a J.C. Yates Madman they're running up and getting ready to go. I'm going to shut off till they turn it loose and catch takeoff. Couldn't get it started. Didn't want to leave you hanging.
the original Nobler, or the rebuild. You know what a Nobler looks like, I'm on the show to you. Just about did. This was built off of patterns of the original Nobler by George Aldrich. As you can see, he still knows how to fly. Yeah, that's a pretty airplane. Smoothie. There's the Stuka Stump. There's the Thunderbird. Another stupid stunt. My wife Ruby, who doesn't know the pictures being taken. Yep. And Tom Dixon's telling a bunch of goodies here. That's Joe Wagner who invented or drew up a bunch of the original Vico kits. I've missed some other guys here. But this is something to see. Dale Kern, explaining how he did it. It's Fox 29 with a tornado plastic coat. 70 feet line, 28,000. I this be done for him to change. You would have to be somebody coming up through the ranks okay. that uh, you don't have to go through the psychological aspect. Okay. Just like, this handle feels better to me. Make a handle that fits everybody. You can't do it. I mean, everybody has their own uh, feel of the way it should be done. So when, when the thing flies, it doesn't look like any different air than flying on the two line. The only real advantage it has is, A, if you crash it, it's your own damn fault because you can't use it a slack line. That's the number one. So <laughs> I mean, uh, there's absolutely no excuse. And I never did it. I fell down one time and the thing landed in itself. Seriously. But I was doing a demonstration. It was done on purpose. So it, it was an insurance policy. And it was just at the point that when I got involved in this, I was uh, kind of phasing out of stuff because of the politics was going on at the time. I was going to get the radio control. I was looking at that. And this came along. And, and uh, of course, in the later years, I must have built 15 or 20 half acres of all kinds of sizes. Because half acres, 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 half
I don't enjoy flying to people because I'm quite happy up there. Yeah. And do what I want to do. And don't, don't have to worry. You can't whip a half A on 70 feet. I got to do this. I got to fly. And that's where this system comes in. So, uh, kind of here at the end of the style, you was hanging on the wall there for a while. So I, uh, I drug it out. You know, I, I probably could just lay that dumb thing in there. No, it'll be fine. I put a little cheater on so why guys like to come around and play with it and see it work. But one thing about it, you cannot move the elevator from the back. Try to move it. I don't care where it's at. Try to pull it up. <laughs> the mechanical work here, I mean, your control, when your line's tighter moving, they work off of torque. And they don't know where the line is tighter moving. So when you fly in the wind, they just fly smoother and yell on the wind. Now that was that's the one thing they got over on the That's the one real advantage. And especially on overhead eights. You never have to worry on an overhead eight about keeping lines in. It's non-existent because the problem isn't there. Because it's a mechanical override. So it takes less skill to fly this than it does to fly this. And I found that out later. But at first, I talked against it for about two years before I even tried. And the first time I flew a, uh, a monolite stunt, I crashed on a wing wall. I took the thing back up. It looked like it was going over a little bit too much. I fell a little down. The thing pivoted and came straight in on me. I wasn't expecting that kind of control. So it's, it's different. I mean, you've got to fly it like a real so here again, you try to convert everyone that already knows how to fly their way. The plan for the super jump. George Bates, you got five minutes on your side. Right, you still have a plan. You got a plan. No, not me. I'm sorry about it. Look, that's an original Stanzil monoline rig there. Longer? Okay, there's another barnstormer. The Vico Brave. It's a DeBolt Vibe with a McCoy in it. So they go something, I don't know what. And there is a real, real old ignition powered airplane. Two of them with bunch engines. Remarkable. Hey, could you uh, tell me anything? Before the Tiger, this was called the Speedway. Okay. Both of them Speedway? No, that was the last of the version. That was called a Cobra. The way Berkeley marketed it. Ray Acord was running the bus business then. And they called it the Cobra. But it's the same engine. Same as the last bus Tiger the, in the late 40s. Okay, these these airplanes essentially just flew straight and level, didn't they? They didn't, were well, they weren't stunners, were they? Uh, new loops, wing over. Actually, uh, Walker flew the fireball inverted, uh, even with the flat bottom wing. Yeah. But, but I never did. Yeah, and that was a modified misbehave. It, uh, after a couple of pile-ups, I changed the shape of the tail and flanked the wings. You going to fly them today? No, I, uh, I just kind of brought them out. I didn't know how many airplanes would be here today. And I'm... Uh, I'm not the quality flyer these guys are. Neither am I. But, uh, <laughs> but those are neat. So, the misbehave there, that, that's actually, that airplane is 32. It's almost 40 years old. Parts of it are newer than that. But yeah, yeah. That's when, it's, when it started out. The airplane is called the Fandaster. Yeah, it was basically designed from a Vico Thunderbird originally. This is airplane number seven. And 
they kept getting a little bit longer, a little more wingspan. This airplane originally was powered with a Vico 35. And uh, the airplane presently has an OS 35. But it hasn't been flown in 15 years. All right, and your name, sir? My name is Cecil Mead. Okay, thank you very much. We got an engine starting, and I, from my experience, it covers our voices up. Thank you very much. Thank you. The Bill Nets band design, the Fierce Arrow. Coming up on a nobler. This is uh, Bob Palmer here. The man that designed the smoothie and also designed the Thunderbird. Oh, that's 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 I'm going to go down the line here. Here's a Ferris Arrow. This is nostalgia stunt, the Aries. Conquistador. Bill's Stuka. The Nico Stunner. Go Devil. Uh, Bob Palmer made it. It was in 1947. It was the Go Devil kit. It's caused from Japan. Go, 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 go. All right. Here's how they fly the pattern in Japan. <laughs> they use very short lines. Uh, next term in eight, they're all neat. Bill Words, Bill Words, Aries. The old Conquistador. That's uh, George Aldrich flying his nobler out there. I got 
Here's Joe Wagner, Bob Palmer, and Bart Kaplinski. Yeah. 